All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna talk about a really complicated topic, hepatorenal syndrome. And we're gonna make it really easy and a lot of fun. Here we have a failed liver, and specifically a cirrhotic liver, perhaps due to alcohol or a virus. Hepatorenal syndrome begins with a cirrhotic liver. Actually, it could also be due to a fulminant liver failure. But since cirrhosis is most associated with hepatorenal syndrome, we'll talk about a cirrhotic liver. Now, of course, when a liver is cirrhotic, that is, it undergoes cirrhosis, the scar tissue makes it difficult for blood to flow through the liver. And thus, pressure builds up in the portal vein. The portal vein is responsible for carrying blood from the splanchnic circulation to carry nutrients to feed the liver. Now, in order to relieve this pressure on the portal vein, nitric oxide and prostaglandins are released, and most notably in the splanchnic circulation. Here we have various arteries and vessels of the splanchnic circulation, and they are being vasodilated by nitric oxide and prostaglandins. This leads to an overall systemic decreased vascular resistance. And which organ picks up on this decreased systemic vascular resistance? The kidneys! Here we have one of them, of course there are two, but we're going to focus on this kidney over here. The kidney, and specifically the juxtagomerular apparatus, recognizes that there's reduced perfusion. That is, there's reduced effective circulating volume. And what does the kidney do in response to that? It activates the RAS system, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Here we have this nephron over here, in order to illustrate what occurs. Angiotensin comes along and constricts the efferent arteriole. This cuts off blood supply to the entire nephron. And of course, this occurs in every nephron of the kidney. Now, as we mentioned before, the splanchnic circulation remains vasodilated, and the kidney continues to pick up on this decreased systemic vascular resistance. So it continues to constrict the efferent arteriole, continuing to, in effect, strangle the nephron to death. And this is exactly how, in hepatal renal syndrome, liver cirrhosis leads to renal failure. Now, I've simplified things in this video just a bit. For example, I didn't distinguish between type 1 and type 2 hepatal renal syndrome. But the truth is, both type 1 and type 2 share these three characteristics. That is, there's altered liver function, leading to abnormalities in circulation, specifically in the splanchnic circulation, which overactivates the kidney RAS system, leading to kidney failure, which we've already spoken about. What I also didn't mention is the involvement of other organs in this process. For example, the baroreceptors of the aorta are also somewhat involved in this process, along with vasopressin released from the brain. But I've simplified this process to explain the underlying mechanism. And this ambulance over here is just to highlight the point that hepatal renal syndrome is a life-threatening emergency. In terms of diagnosis, it's actually kind of like a diagnosis of exclusion. We find renal failure in the setting of a cirrhotic liver, but the renal failure is not due to shock, infection, medication, or something else. And so we blame it on the cirrhosis and the portal hypertension. Right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on hepatorenal syndrome. Take care.